AMD is cooking a monstrous GPU right now, the likes of which might actually just beat Nvidia. Let's talk. So there's been some rumors out for a few months about this 190 XT or XTX. Moore's Law is dead has come out and said that he thinks this is gonna match a 6090. I've seen leaks from, you know, red gaming tech and things like that claiming this thing is gonna be twice as fast as a 5090. And boys, I just have to clear the air here. There is a lot of hype surrounding this product. Today, you are not going to get that hype. You're gonna get the number crunching and a performance estimate that is very mild, okay? That being said, the 190 XTX, whatever you wanna call it, RDNA 5, UDNA, it's looking good, okay? It's looking like a GPU that's going to be able to compete with Nvidia in the high end, okay? Whether that's current high-end or next-gen high-end, well, that is the debate. So today we're gonna to talk about the 190 XTX, also, you know, down the stack, 170 XT, 160 XT, and then the 170 GRE. RDNA 5 is looking like a pretty good generation when it comes to gaming GPUs. However, my main concern will be the pricing of these products going forward with inflation, new nodes, and overall AI taking over when it comes to GPUs in general, even on the AMD side, as we see now with the AMD deal with Sam Altman and OpenAI, right? So AMD is even getting in on the AI action now. I was surprised to see that, but hey, you know, they're a player in the game now. So let's get into the 190 XT. I think it's gonna be called the XTX. Moore's Law's Dead leaked this a couple months ago. Based on his specs, he said it's gonna have 154 compute units. That's a huge number. It's actually 240% more than the 9070 XT. Not only that, he thinks there's gonna be a 10% IPC gain with all of these compute units. Um, it's gonna have a 380 watt TDP, so significant amount of power this thing is drawing, but compared to other high-end cards we have now, like the 5090, it's actually mid-range when it comes to power. Um, however, I don't think the performance is gonna be mid-range, guys. It is using a 384-bit bus. That's the same as the 4090. This is not 5090 levels of uh, bus width here. However, using 36 gigabit GDDR7, uh, this thing's gonna have 1,728 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. That's right around the 5090, guys. So in one generation of GDDR7, we've increased so much, and it's crazy just to see how AMD waiting one generation for GDDR7 to mature is resulting in this amount of bandwidth gain. Now, I will say, guys, I think GDDR7 speeds on the 50 series has been artificially nerfed and limited. I don't know why these GDDR7 modules, I have to say that so often, you know, try saying GDD, D, <laughs> try saying GDDR like five times in a row, you will get tongue tied. But yeah, these GDDR7 modules on the 50 series are severely underclocked. MSI recently came out with a new version of MSI Afterburner version 4.6.6 and my 5090 can overclock its VRAM modules from 28 gigabit per second to 34 gigabit per second resulting in a you know over 2.1 terabytes per second of memory bandwidth so this is matching stock 5090 a tune 5090 is going to blow this out of the water in memory bandwidth the 190 XT is also going to have 36 gigabytes of this GDDR7 clocked at 36 gigabit per second. That's a 225% increase over the 9070 XT. Guys, I'm gonna say this right now. I'm kind of skeptical of AMD giving us 36 gigabytes of VRAM on a gaming card. And I know you may be thinking, why would you be skeptical? AMD's always giving more and more VRAM out when it comes to uh, Nvidia. And you have to remember the 5090 shirt sure, has 32 gigs of VRAM, but it's not really a gaming card. It has the GeForce branding and everything, but it's more of a content creation RTX Titan replacement. And this almost seems like AMD is matching that here, giving us one of their pro level cards, but in the consumer segment with 36 gigabytes of VRAM, if this thing has great AI accelerators and they're working on that, and it's even based on UDNA architecture, a lot of people are calling this RDNA 5, but I'm not sure if AMD's actually were are progressing with RDNA or if we're moving to UDNA with this. In the case of them use, moving to UDNA, this thing would be an absolute monster for AI workloads. 
akin to the 5090. So yeah, 36 gigabytes of VRAM. In that regard, if they market this as kind of a content creation AI card, I could see it. If it's solely gaming, I wouldn't expect this to be released to consumers in that case. However, with 154 compute units, this amount of memory bandwidth on a 384-bit bus, Moore's Law is Dead is thinking this thing is going to be 6090s levels of performance. Now, I don't think he's came out and said what you know 6090 performance is gonna be, but over the 9070 XT, he basically said a low end for this thing would be 200% gain, so twice as fast, up to 240% faster than the 9070 XT. Now, based on the math, if you, if you kind of count the IPC, the cores all scaling, it's gonna be around 240%, 250% faster than the 9070 XT. Absolutely ripping performance from AMD here, but I am gonna go out on a limb and say these things are not gonna scale linearly. You know, RDNA 4 had some great scaling with the compute units, but that, to be fair, it only went up to 64 compute units, very mid-range, um, and this is, what, 200, almost two and a half times more compute units, guys, and if we're moving to a different architecture, again, with UDNA, I it's gonna be hard to say if this thing will scale, and there might actually be driver issues in games if we're use, moving to UDNA and trying to make that work with gaming. Just saying, guys, I think that's a possibility. And with that taken into account, I agree with Moore's Law's dead lower estimate of this being twice as fast as the 9070 XT. And guys, guess what? That puts it right around a 5090. However, based on you know scaling and if the drivers come out good, this thing could be 20 to 30% faster than a 5090. And in that case, it's right up matching a 6090 in performance. So the big question with the 190 XT is not whether it will beat the 6090, it's whether it will beat the 5090 and trade blows with the 6090. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this now, AMD is not gonna beat the 6090 with the 384 bit bus guys. It's not gonna happen. The 6090, if it has a 512 bit bus like the leaks show, yeah, there's no way. Um, the only way this would happen is if AMD has been uh, revitalizing its architecture generation after generation, which we've seen some signs of that, and their drivers are so maliciously tuned for low latency, low CPU overhead, that in CPU bound scenarios, this would beat the 6090. However, in pure graphics, pure just ray tracing, I wouldn't count myself that lucky when it comes to Radeon cards, guys. So yeah, based on just crunching the numbers alone, this thing is looking like it's 200 to 240% faster than a 9070 XT, putting us in 5090 to 6090 ranges of performance. In no way is this thing going to dog all over the 6090 like other leaks have claimed. Um, I'm not sure how they're getting to that conclusion. I've heard some things like each compute unit is actually going to have double the amount of shader operations as last generation. Even in that case, guys, I'm not sure how you would get to that conclusion that a 384 bit 190 XT built on three nanometer is going to match a 6090 built on three nanometer with a 512 bit bus. I mean, come at me, maybe, we, we're gonna get uh, less and less scaling out of NVIDIA GPUs. You know, these GPUs have been built off this baseline of CUDA for decades now, and the drivers are starting to get a little bit bloated. So when it comes to CPU overhead, when it comes to overall optimization, AMD may take the cake when it comes to gaming, when it comes to content creation, AI workload, and things like that, that you would actually wanna buy this card for, NVIDIA is gonna have a cakewalk, in my opinion. So yeah, interesting from, you know, 5090 to 6090 performance, but what if I did a calculation based off the die size of the 90 XT added in IPC and then also added in the gain of going from four nanometer to three nanometer? Something similar that I did to actually calculate the 6090's performance over the 5090. I thought, hey, I could actually do that here and I'm gonna give you guys the results today. So basically what I did is I looked at the die size of the 9070 XT. I also looked at the die size of the 5080. It's built on the same process node as the 9070 XT. The 5080 has a 6% um, bigger die than the 9070 XT, but it has a 20% performance advantage. So actually it has 14% performance advantage per area of die size. 
Okay, so I looked at the 5080, I calculated its die size compared to the 6090, and I found this in a roundabout way, guys. You know, don't come at me in the comment section for this. This is all for speculation and fun's sake. But if we got 190 XT with an increased die size, something a little bit less than a 5090 in die size, with the gains from TSMC three nanometer and also IPC gains, we'd probably get around 90% more performance than the 9070 XT, just around 90% more performance. And that puts us right around a 5090. Uh, so I'm on the side of this thing actually being a 5090 competitor more than a 6090 competitor. When you crunch the numbers, when you look at the die sizes, calculate performance gains based on those die sizes, it's looking like a 5090 competitor. But guys, the real question is whether AMD can optimize their software stack when it comes to gaming particularly to actually edge out Nvidia and be a little bit more optimized. And it's crazy we're talking about this now where AMD is more optimized than Nvidia, but as just looking at it pragmatically, I think that is a possibility, guys. There AMD could get a 20% lead over Nvidia just because they have a hyper optimized driver stack for gaming but I could see this going the other way. If they move to uDNA technology that's not very optimized or even tuned for gaming at all at this point, honestly, the launch of this card could just be horrible and we could have driver issues just like the 5700 XT last time AMD moved to a new GPU architecture. So what do you guys think about the 190 XT? I'm thinking 5090 performance is more where this thing is gonna sway towards 6090 is possible, but when it comes to driver tuning and all that, that's actually gonna be uh, the deciding factor for the performance for this thing. But the math says closer to a 5090 than a 6090. We'll see how it turns out. Next up, and actually this one is very disappointing to me personally, is the 170 XT. And I tell you why. Moore's Law is Dead is saying this thing is gonna have 64 compute units. That might sound familiar because the 9070 XT also has 64 compute units. What the heck, AMD? You're giving us a new node with density gains and not give, attributing any more compute units with those density gains. It does not make sense. If you jump to a new node with higher density, you should be giving us more cores on that performance tier. And this is gonna result in only like a 10, 15% gain over the 9070 XT for the 170 XT. And essentially Moore's Law is dead. It's, basically said it's going to be a 50 80 maybe it's going to be 600 so basically you know 10 20 percent more uh price to performance if it actually launches it at that price now a nice thing is it's going to have gddr7 it's going to have 18 gigabytes of it and that's going to result in 864 gigabytes of memory bandwidth uh, about a 34 percent increase over the 9070 xt now if this thing has uh, improved ray tracing cores and with that more memory bandwidth i could see it being significantly faster maybe 30 40 percent uh, even up to 50 if AMD really cooks uh, when it comes to ray tracing. But when it comes to pure raster, it's not gonna be that impressive. Next up, I just wanted to gloss over the 170 GRE and the 160 XT. These cards, to me, just aren't as exciting. I have a 5090 now. I'm looking for something that doubles the performance over my 5090. I know it's a hot take, but these things, it's gonna be difficult for AMD to price these accordingly. Um, with all the inflation that we've seen, we've actually already seen 10% inflation this year in 2025 alone. And with the price of GDDR7 rising, three nanometer, I wouldn't count getting one of these for anything under $400, to be honest with you guys. Now, it is nice, we're gonna get the 170 GRE with 15 gigabytes of GDDR7, and Moore's Law's Dead has come out with some other specs on this thing. I'm not gonna detail them here with my voice. I'll show them on screen, but I'm gonna estimate this thing is around a 5070 in performance. I think he said more like 40, 5070 Ti, but based on what the specs show, I'm gonna say more like 5070, maybe a little bit faster than that. It really just depends how this architecture clocks, how fast it clocks and how well the drivers are optimized. And then lastly, the 160 XT. And I'm gonna say this thing's around a 4070 with the same amount of VRAM, 12 gigs. And it's basically an RTX 3080, but probably around 350 a few years later. So yeah, that is the RDNA 5 stack. 190 XTX with 5090 to 6090 performance 
We're gonna wait on that and see what it actually comes out to. The 170 XT with a measly 15%, 50, 80 performance boost over the 90, 70 XT. And then lastly, the 170 GRE, 50, 70 performance and 160 XT. 4070 performance. Now, a few of the things that could make this generation worth it for buyers is if AMD addresses ray tracing performance and actually leapfrogs Nvidia and actually it gets better ray tracing performance. It could happen, guys. Well, we, you know, um, we've seen some huge advancements with the PS5 Pro. So if they bring that some of that technology to RDNA 5, it could be pretty cool. And then um, I would like to see overall better support for AI, increased AI performance. I know it's kind of a meme um, and most people don't really care about AI, but I think that's one area AMD is actually lacking now. And if you're gonna spend you know, thousands of dollars on a graphics card, you're probably going to want it to be able to compute and not only gaming, but also AI. Lastly, I'm just gonna give a brief overview of what I think these things are gonna cost. This is totally just my speculation. Let me know what you think they're cost in the comments down below. But the 190 XT, you know, it has 36 gigabytes of VRAM, probably upwards of a 500 millimeter squared die, maybe 600 millimeter squared. And you know, that's not gonna be cheap on TSMC three nanometer. So I'm gonna say this thing, MSRP is $1,200, maybe even $1,300. On the street, it's gonna be around $1,500 for AIB models. And I'd be very surprised if AMD comes out with that and it's a thousand. Um, that's pretty good at a thousand dollars 36 gigabytes of vram if it has you know updated udna architecture that's good for ai i would expect that to get scalped so if they launch that at a thousand pick it up day one if you can 170 xt this thing i mean it's going to be 15 percent faster than a 9070 xt maybe 20. um it better come out at 600 dollars. like the msrp should not increase over the 9070 XT, but I know inflation's a thing. I know TSMC three nanometer costs more. So I'm gonna say $700 for that, hopefully. Um, it does have you know two more gigs of VRAM. Maybe it's gonna have better AI performance. And then lastly, the 170 GRE, I'm gonna say $450. Um, you know, it's 5070 performance or so, maybe 5070 Ti if we're lucky. And then lastly, the 1060 XT. It only has 12 gigs of VRAM, 4070 performance. It better be 350. And I think that's the most people are gonna be willing to pay for an AMD 12 gigabyte GPU when this thing comes out. And that's the last thing I wanted to talk about. When did all these cards come out? Cause this performance might sound good now for the prices, but these things aren't gonna come out for at least another year and a half. So. I'm gonna estimate somewhere in the realm of fall 2026 to January 2027. And I'm leaning closer to January 2027, guys. Basically, it's gonna be <laughs> a year and a half from now. And that's the thing, like if you can buy a 5070 Ti for $700 to $750 now, are you really gonna wanna wait a few years to be able to buy that for, I don't know, $100 less with the AMD sticker on it that may or may not have better features? You know, the 190 XT, if that's matching a 5090 with a couple more gigs of VRAM and um, actually, you know, $500 less, but the real street price, like $1,500 less, that is exciting. And I could see AI bros getting all over that. And honestly, if AMD is competitive with these parts and actually pushes for market share and switches to an AI based UDNA architecture with great drivers, I could see them legit taking over a heart on gamers um, and actually game developers and things like that. Now, it, it, it just depends. It, it, the ball's in AMD's court. NVIDIA's out to play a different game, the AI race. And I know AMD's trying to do that now with open AI and everything, but AMD, I implore you, go ahead and go for some market share next gen because you have a chance here. The 6090 is probably gonna be what? $2,500, $3,000 MSRP. So you have a chance here, price this thing 1,200, 1,300 bucks. And you know, the AIBs can mark it up to 1,500, 1,600 bucks. And at that point, people are getting a massive uplift in performance with a huge, chunky 36 gigabyte GPU that can actually just rip and tear over any game they want. So what do you guys think? Is this all hype or did I actually lowball the estimates today? Let me know. Silicon State, State signing out. Every review, every spec, he's on deck from GPUs to CPUs. He knows it all. No question too big, no detail too small. He's got the knowledge. He's got the skill. 
when he drops his tape the haters stand still fanboys can cry but they can't deny silicon stakes truth cuts through the lie